Grant broke one. Today we're gonna build one. We'll teach you all the juicy science behind it and do some really fun experiments. So what makes a plasma globe work is you have a high voltage transformer down inside this box, which pumps a ton of volts into a globe filled with air or some other choice gases. They actually fill these with noble gases like argon or helium, and that's what creates these incredible blue tracing effects. It actually works very similarly to a fluorescent light bulb. The bulb is filled with a noble gas and, well, in a fluorescent bulb it's also filled with mercury, but the voltage excites the particles inside and it starts glowing. Which means if we touch it to the plasma globe, the voltage from the globe will actually light it up, which is crazy. We've all seen these, we've all played with them. Let's learn exactly how they work by trying to build one from scratch. So you can build the top part of this with some semi-basic materials. All the way on the inside there, we've just got a gear shifter knob and we've attached it to a piece of all thread that we put a little insulation around. We drop that all down through a hole in this piece of corian. This is countertop material. And we put some epoxy in there to seal our globe. We've also got some little pieces of PVC that we put around the hole. So we filled those with epoxy and that's what creates our seal. This is literally just a globe that goes around light bulbs. I had to look really hard to find one that was 14 inches. But here it is, and it works fantastic as our plasma globe. So what's under this thing? Here we have a spark plug wire. Now this is important because it will conduct 50,000 volts safely, which is really nice. And that hooks directly up to this threaded rod that goes all the way up to the ball on top. And we've also got our vacuum tube, which is really important because this thing will not work unless it's got a vacuum or you've got it filled with noble gases. Originally, Jerem had a really pretty wood box, and then I destroyed that and put it in this. I know. Why do we keep you around? Because I, I make stuff work. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Mine broke. <laughs> okay. Now we get into the guts of how this thing actually works. The electronics. So this all looks very complicated. It, it, it is a little complicated, but it's not that complicated. So this white box right here, that's a DC power supply. That plugs directly into the wall. I got it flipped over on its side so we can fit in the box. That pumps out, I think we're running it right now in like 25 volts, which goes through a circuit board and some fancy stuff, which, which I'll explain in a moment, to a car ignition coil, which is, I think it's a flyback transformer that ups your 30 volts to like 40,000. And that output is what plugs into the plasma ball. Power comes from the outlet, goes into the AC to DC converter, also called the DC power supply. It converts 120 volts AC current to, in our case, 30 volts DC current. That then plugs into one end of the transformer. The other end goes down to this relay. I'm calling it a relay. It's technically not actually a relay, but it, it acts like a relay, so. It's basically an electronic switch that switches the current on and off very, very rapidly based on what our pulse generator tells it. The pulse generator, as I'm calling it, is a little circuit board with a bunch of electronics magic going on in there and what's called a 555 timer chip. And you control that using these two potentiometers and that controls the length and width of the pulse. So that switches this thing on and off, which then connects to the transformer. So this whole thing basically sends out 40,000 volts high voltage at a very high frequency, switching on and off very, 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 very fast. And high frequency, high voltage goes into the plasma globe and that's what creates the plasma. This thing, honestly, it, we're, we're making it sound very simple and it is simple in principle, but um, in practice, this thing caused us no end of headaches. And it was all the electronics. Um, uh, we fried out two power supplies. Yep. Um, several chips. Multi, multiple potentiometers. The potentiometers, uh, the relay. I can't remember what it's actually called. We, we fried. Those, yep. um, then it didn't fit in the box and I had to build this monstrosity. We didn't ground the potentiometers, so I touched the potentiometer and the thing at the same time and it put static electricity <laughs> all the way through the circuit and fried everything. It was a nightmare. <laughs> it really was. But it should be working now. So let's plug it in and see. Half of the circuit is low voltage. The wire coming from the transformer is high voltage. So if you touch that, it will be hilarious and not very fun. 
Did you ever touch it? No. I didn't either. <laughs> you should touch it. I think it'd be funny. Don't touch it. <laughs> but you can touch the plasma globe. That so all of the high voltage should be sealed inside and fine. Okay, should we turn it on? Yeah. Oh, we do need to vacuum it down. So he's hooking up the vacuum hose. That goes down to this gauge, which tells us how much vacuum pressure we have, which goes down to this giant vacuum pump. Because we find we need a really big vacuum pump to empty this whole thing. True. So we're going to kick on the pump, then we're going to open up that valve, and it's going to pull all, all the air, air out of the plasma globe. Before we do that, though, we're going to turn it on for you right now without vacuuming the glass, just to see what happens. Okay, let's turn the lights off, because I'm not seeing anything, but it is pretty dim. We're not seeing any kind of arcs at all. No plasma at all. And the reason for that is because it can't put enough voltage through the air to ionize the particles, right? That's correct. Air is actually a phenomenal insulator. Air is not very electrically conductive at all. It takes an enormous amount of voltage to ionize the air enough to create a pathway that's conductive for the arc to travel through, which is why lightning bolts are like 300 million volts. But if we suck the air out, for some reason, less air is more conductive. It's much more easy to ionize the particles. So we have found that you want to get it to as much of a vacuum as possible. And with this pump, we can only get it to- like 24, right? 24, yeah, around 24. What, what is the vacuum measurement? I have is no it idea. Inches of, it's inches of something, inches of mercury? I don't know. All right, now that it's all vacuumed down, if I hit the on button, we should actually see something. <laughs> Look at that. Nice. That's insane. Look at that. Woo. So changing the pulse length and width, basically making slight adjustments to the frequency of the voltage, does all this crazy stuff. So what's going on inside this ball? Well, pulling a vacuum means less air, which means it's much easier for the high voltage to ionize those gases. And ionizing air is it's almost like breaking it down, um, creating a conductive path. And that's what all these streamers are doing. Now the actual circuit that's going on somehow is creating like a giant capacitor with the inside of the glass, the surface of the glass and the voltage coming off the knob. It's attracted to your hand because you become part of the capacitor and it wants to go to your hand because there's less resistance than just all over the glass. We had a number of different experiments to do. What's the first one? The magic rocks. The magic rocks. Very powerful magnets. Okay, we're just gonna see if it does anything. I have no idea if it'll do anything. I, it just, it just conducts normally. Are you? Oh, because you're touching the metal. I'm touching the metal. What if I touch the tape yeah. that's over it? It's, it's still it's conducts. Essentially the same. Yeah. It doesn't. What if I held it with some pliers? That's, that's interesting. Cool. So I wonder if that's magnetic at all, or if it's just because it's metal. Huh. Because, okay, so I've got a screwdriver here. Let's try the same thing with a screwdriver. It's not as strong because the metal's thinner, but it seems to be doing the same I thing. I want glove. I'm on plastic, so I'm not actually, like, I'm not grounded to the, the thing. So the, the metal is isolated, but it's still arcing to the metal. That's interesting. We accidentally discovered that static electricity will make your globe turn on. It's still, what the? You're, you're charged. We're charged. That's yeah. the issue. <laughs> so touch that to this, and I'll rotate it. Holy goodness, that's amazing. Uh, I, it'll probably work a little bit with the giant globe, but this is like finely tuned. It's much, much more sensitive because it's filled with actual noble gases, which are much easier to ionize. That's actually insane. Whoa. I can feel the table shocking my belly. Yeah, ah! yeah, yeah. <laughs> In my fingers. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. Okay, hang on. Well, let's try it with the big one. Wow. Let me build up a charge first and then... Woo, that was cool. Whoa. You can see it light up for an instant. Whoa. So, okay, similar to what we're pumping into it, static electricity is a very high voltage, very short pulse. So it's just pulsing it on and off. That's crazy. So we have a fluorescent bulb here, and when we get into the energy field of the plasma globe, it'll actually light up this bulb. It excites the particles on the inside, and they light up, just like that. That is crazy. And look how far away it is. That, this thing is putting off an insane electric field. That is right? wild. Now, 
when I put my hand in a way, I absorb a lot of that power and it goes right through my body and so it can only <laughs> whoop, light up up to my hand essentially. That's so weird. It's really, really neat. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I love okay, that. okay, hang on. What if you held this in one hand and touched the globe with the other? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's transmitting through him. That's amazing. That's Jake, insane. Hold this. Uh-huh. Walk that way. Oh, are we gonna hold hands? Yeah. Take We're me to that dinner first. <laughs> that is, it, I mean, it is, it's low, but it is working. That's so legit. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna no let go. Way. There it goes. And it turns off. And touch then, again. Boop. Ah! What if we touch the, the store-bought globe to okay. this okay. one? Ah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. It's so much, it's so much color. It's so red. I wonder if that, that red orange, I think is neon because neon glows a red orange color. Okay, nothing with that. Okay. okay. The incandescent light bulb. Boo. Let's try, let's try actually hooking the coil up to this. Oh, that'd be cool. All right, so let's turn it off. Wait, didn't I want to lick this? You, I want you to lick it, but <laughs> you don't want to lick it. I kind of, I kind of want to see what happens. All right, Jerem, lick it, please. That doesn't do much. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we might be losing vacuum. We could hook up the vacuum pump again and just see if that's the case. While we're getting that re-vacuumed down, I wanna show you what the transformer does outside of the globe. So inside the globe, it creates all this awesome plasma. Outside, it just creates an electric arc. So if we turn this on. Because air is, again, very resistive. Holy crap. That's, a wow. I'm gonna be real, I did not think it was that large. <laughs> that is kind of spooky. All, I wanna burn some. I, I don't wanna to touch the screwdriver anymore. Look at that. Can we put your notes in the way? I, I guess. <laughs> it's burning right through them. We, awesome. we just created a plasma arc lighter. <laughs> okay, that's scaring me. I'm turning it off. Can only create an arc that's like an inch long, and then when vacuumed down and the air is less resistive, it can create the, these huge arcs. That's so cool. I do okay, like the lightning cool. effect here, though. That's that was awesome. <laughs> that's interesting. It, it's it, pretty before, cool. Like you literally got lightning arcs. Try touching with this. Yeah, that'll light up. Ho oh, ho! That's so sick. Yeah, that's a good one. It almost looks like atmospheric reentry, like on a spacecraft. Oh, oh there's that's the lightning. Really cool. Oh, that's fun. So there's some lightning showing up. It really does look like uh, like reentry. Wow. Yeah, that's a zap. That'll huh? hit you. I'm trying to let go <laughs> when you touch it so it's more powerful. And <laughs> You're you. trying to get me. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate that. The light bulb looks way better than. <laughs> I, yeah, right. Than the big globe we built. Yo. Oh wow. Oh, there. <laughs> that's what we're talking about. That's super that's, cool. It's like yellow lightning in a bottle. That's awesome. Holy crap, that's incredible. Oh, that's fun. I have absolutely no idea what's causing that orange in there. See, it doesn't zap me as much. Is that, I, I've read that light bulbs, incandescent light bulbs are sometimes filled with a bit of argon. I wonder if that's what the orange is. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, it still feels weird. Wow. <laughs> it's interesting, it doesn't do anything until you touch it. Like that's as much as it'll do. I think regardless of how I adjust it. But then when you touch it, it comes to life. That's interesting. That's really cool. I love that there's like clouds of plasma in there. There, oh, oh my. Oh yeah. That's I mean, that's, awesome. it, that's literally yeah, lightning. You can see lightning. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fantastic. Oh, I like it. Oh, it's actually insane. Smelling the ozone again. Yeah, we're probably creating a bit too much of that. So I've heard that if you put a layer of aluminum foil over the ball, it acts like a capacitor and it'll actually charge up with voltage. And then when you touch the foil, you'll get like an arc outside the ball. And that sounds awesome and a little painful. So we're gonna have Jerem try that. <laughs> I might be willing to do that. It does arc out, but... Wow! <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one! <laughs> okay, so it arcs. You can draw it out with a screwdriver. Yeah, but you could touch it and that'd I be I could. Better. 
but then it would hurt. This is called peer pressure. Fine, I'll touch Jay, it, but I'll, touch I'll put it. my finger on the screwdriver. Uh, that'll get you. I'm pretty sure uh, that's going to be enough. Fine. <laughs> I don't want to. Fine. Ah, holy <laughs> crap! That is, yeah, that's a serious zap. Oh. That that feels like a stun gun. Oh wow! Wait, this is peer pressure, kids. You can avoid it. <laughs> Jeez, that's a lot, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's, it's, uh, it actually feels like a stun gun. We had a great time playing with plasma globes today and figuring out some things that worked, some things that didn't work. It was awesome. Static electricity somehow makes these things go off, which I did not see coming at all. We constructed one from scratch. It worked, which also I didn't see coming at all. <laughs> it was difficult, <laughs> but it was fun. <laughs> I think my favorite part was lighting up this globe off of some of the other stuff. That was really fun, just to hold it in your hands as the whole thing lit up. That was super cool. All right. Anyway, hope you all learned a bunch about plasma globes and how they work. We will see you on the next episode. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let the random happen.